Greetings folks, now that iNav supports VTOL craft, I've been mucking around with a few different VTOL designs such as the Femi Manta, I have that working nicely on iNav, uh, my Thea tail sitter, uh, I haven't quite got that working yet but uh, it's a work in progress, I can get certain aspects of it flying well. But I thought it was time to have a look at a dedicated VTOL flight control board uh, and this is the F405 VTOL from Matec. So what makes a VTOL board different to other boards uh, and is it worth spending the extra money to get the VTOL board? Let's have a closer look at it and we'll have a look at the comparisons. This is what we get in the pack at. We get uh, the usual three color pins, very nice. There's the board and the USB extension with beeper on it and uh, boot button. There's a four pin JST plug for plugging into this port here. Spare bolts for mounting the board and a 470 microfarad 35 volt capacitor for soldering over the power inputs uh, and that's to reduce a little bit of the electrical interference getting into the board. And now a closer look at the board. Let's just start, well start with the obvious thing here. We got all these extra pads on the bottom board which is the power distribution board. Uh, and that is the main difference of a VTOL board. You get extra uh, ESC power pads and we have four, two on each side and another one down here. So you could easily wire up a quad plane with this board. A quad plane is normal plane with its own motor and um, a quad bolted onto it so it can take off vertically basically. Haven't made a quad plane but they're apparently the just about the easiest um, VTOL style of, board, of plane to, to get flying. Uh, we've got C1 and C2 camera, uh, 9 volts and 5 volts. So it does support camera switching. Video transmitter with 9 volt power there. Uh, and uh, VBAT and ground there. And this is UART 6, uh, UART 4. Here are the two conventional ESC connections, S1 and S2. Then we've got S3, S4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They're all PWM outputs that uh, can be either servos or motors. And there's S11, another PWM output. LED uh, analog airspeed sensor. Uh, there's UART1, SWD and SWC, RG Pilot inputs, uh, UART2, UART3 with the I2C connection, DA and CL as well. So you would use that for your GPS and compass for convenience. There's another I2C connection there, UART5, analog RSSI and SBUS, which will be the inverted R2 pin. And again, that is uh, supplied with a 4.5 volt uh, supply from the USB as well. Down on the bottom board we also get a 5 volt and ground pad there and a 9 volt and ground pad there for whatever you need them for. Uh, SD card reader there and let's pull him apart. Alright, taking the top lid off so we have the interboard connector there that has to be carefully plugged into these plugs here and making sure you don't bend any of the pins. There's a bit of foam over the barometer just to stop uh, airflow confusing your barometer readings. Down here we have some solder bridge pads to change the servo power from 5 volts to 6 volts to 7.2 volts. We also have a 3.3 volt pad here and ground for anything that uh, needs 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts. And we also have a solder bridge pad here for 12 volts. That will be for changing the uh, video transmitter voltage from 9 volts to 12 volts. Can be powered with 2 to 6S. And if we have another look at the top here, it'll show us the uh, INAV and RG Pilot targets. Matic F405TE-ST is the target we would look for if we're going to flash new firmware. We also get a pin in out pad here for uh, different uses. You can use that for camera switching as well. So basically it's pretty much the same as the uh, F405 V2, just that it has all these extra pads for connecting all your extra motors to, rather than having to twist you know, wires from three different motors together and try and solder them on these little pads. It's probably the most difficult part of uh, assembly of these boards is um, soldering big wires onto little pads like that. So this board makes it a lot easier for you. Over on the Matec website here, uh, and we'll look at the, some of the specs. Uh, so, 
the MCU, IMU, uh, OSD are all the same as the, let's have a look at the, this is the uh, FRO5 wing V2. All we've got is a different barometer, that's the DPS 310 on the V2 and uh, SPL 06001 on the VTOL. Six UARTs and one I2C, and that's the same. Three ADC on the V2 and four on the VTOL. Uh, we get two pin in out. The servo BEC on the VTOL is eight amps continuous with 10 amps peak, uh, and it's only five amps continuous and six amps peak on the V2. So beefed up BEC for the servos. Uh, if we look at the specs, five ESC power pads with a total of 100 amps continuous. Uh, and the, the, the main ESC connection, power connection, can be 100 amps, and the others are 30 amps each, the, the four quad style uh, ESC pads. So basically it's the same rated current draw between the two boards, but it's divided between the, the four quad pads and the single motor pad on the VTOL board. But anyway, it makes wiring up much, much easier with all these extra pads to connect your ESCs to. And here's an example of the VTOL wiring. The quads go to the side pads there and the main motor goes to the main pads on the end. And there's the battery connection there. And if you're just using it for a normal plane, uh, then you just connect it the normal way with just the uh, one or two motors there and battery. JST SH connector there is for digital airspeed sensor. GPS into UART5 uh, and receiver into UART2, either the S bus pin or the RX and TX for crossfire. Can do video transmitter into the VTX and uh, camera switching in the C1 and C2, of course. And it's always good to have a look at the tips as well. It has INAV preloaded for quality control, but uh, you would have to update that to the latest uh, INAV 7.1.2, whatever, to get the best of the VTOL possibilities with profile switching. All right, so what it might do now is connect it up to the INAV configurator and uh, update it to the la latest firmware. Now, something you must always do with a new board is plug it in before you do any soldering. Turn it on. Let's turn that beeper off to maintain peace in the household. And okay, so we've got uh, the right port opening up on the in the USB port connect. So this is on our 7.1.1 so what we need to do is put into DFU mode. You can do that by pushing the button, pushing and holding the button on the little USB board before you connect and that will put into DFU mode. Firmware flasher, choose the board, should be included in this version of INAV. F405 TESD, that's the one we want. And 7.1.2, let's go for the latest. Load firmware. Flash firmware, you can read all of that information as well if you need to. Programming successful, let's uh, connect again. Let's say we're going to just for the moment set it up as a, an aeroplane with a tail. And first thing we do, of course, is do the calibrations. So now the accelerometer is calibrated. These are the uh, gains and zero values. If we go to the CLI uh, and do a diff and uh, save that to file. Now have a look at that file and you can see those values are here. You can always reapply these values into the CLI and that does the calibration for you. You never have to calibrate again if you're doing a firmware update. So there it is, the Matec F405 VTOL board. Uh, built for a purpose, specifically suited for quad planes where you have a quad and a plane mashed together, five motors and five sort of uh, sets of solder pads for the power. You don't really need it for other forms of VTOL, uh, things like tail sitters where you only actually have two motors. Tricopter style VTOL like the V2 
Steamy Manta uh, would be easier to set up on this board. Could use it for quads, could use it for normal planes, uh, quite versatile really. And it has a beefed up BEC for more servos. So uh, a useful product from Maytec, really good quality as usual from Maytec. In the future, I'll do another video showing what particular VTOL I use this board for. Um, I don't know yet. Uh, I haven't really come up with an idea, but uh, uh, that'll be fun to work it out anyway. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.